Now, this time yesterday, Andy Murray was just about to complete his win at Wimbledon. Today, he's celebrating his victory with a, a visit to Downing Street. Look at him there, standing outside that famous black door amid speculation that a knighthood could be on the cards uh, for the player. The 26-year-old is the first British man to take the Wimbledon title in, yes, 77 years. On Sunday, the 26-year-old British number one beat the world number one, uh, Novak Djokovic, to take home the men's single uh, title. Well, I'm delighted to say that former Wimbledon champion uh, Martina Navratilova is in central London. We talk about uh, legends, Martina Navratilova. I'm just going to go through it. So, Wimbledon champion, 1978, 1979, 1982, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87 and 1990. Have I missed any out? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just an extraordinary record. I just wonder, how do you stay... If you, when you climb the peak and you're at the top of the mountain, how do you stay there? How did you stay there? You, that, that list covers three decades, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Mm -hmm. Well, I do speeches on that topic, but uh, for me, it was always be, being the best tennis player that I could possibly be. It wasn't about chasing titles or breaking records. Those came along the way. I was fortunate enough that I did it well enough. But I think also once you start winning, then, you know, it's, it's like a nice drug. You want to keep doing it uh, for all the right reasons. Uh, you get motivated by success, and, and, then, and then the success most motivates you more. Uh, you have to be motivated to get that success, and, and Andy has shown how hard work does pay off. You have to put in those times on the court, off the court, in the gym, on the track, running those extra reps, going over the films, going over the technique and tactics and all that. But if you have the talent, if you put in the hard work, it will pay off and, and is a living proof of that. So kudos to him. Yeah, but it's uh, hard to perhaps maintain that kind, of, that kind of motivation. But for him, he's just getting started. So that's easy, I think. You, you, talk about, you talk about the physical aspect of it, but there must be a really strong mental aspect of it, particularly to be a Brit, to be playing at Wimbledon when you haven't won, you know, all the time that you were playing, they were saying, when is it going to be the first men's single champion? It, it was elusive as ever. The mm. Extraordinary mental pressure there must be on players as well. Well, of course. I mean, it, it's self-imposed. And then uh, for Andy, he had it as a Brit. Uh, it was exponential. Uh, but I think it, for a while maybe it was getting to him because he wasn't sure he could do it. Because he did it in steps, incremental steps, getting to the finals was step number one. Well, hiring Ivan Landel step number one. Getting to the finals uh, at, at Wimbledon, losing to Roger, and then coming right back, winning the Olympic medal. When I think the pressure was off him a little bit because he was part of a bigger picture, part of a bigger team. The support that he got. And then winning the US Open, winning that first Grand Slam for the first time. Now you know you can win a slam. And now the next step was Wimbledon. And I'm glad it happened now because now he doesn't have to worry about answering that question ever again and answering it for the next year. Because believe me, when you lose a Wimbledon final, that next year is very, very long when you want to get on the court the next day and play. So now he can relax about it all. But the pressure was amazing. But because Andy had done all the homework, you know, he has done everything that he possibly could to be the best tennis player right now, that kind of takes care of the nerves in a way because there's nothing more you could have done. And, you know, let's just see if I can do it under pressure. And he did that last game to serve out the match. I tell you, when you're serving for, for the Wimbledon final, uh, for the title, it, the heart rate goes up anyway when you're serving. And then when you're serving for, for a Grand Slam title, particularly Wimbledon, the heart rate goes up even more. And when I, when I served for it uh, against Chris the first time, I, I, I held my serve at love. It was a quick game. Andy was there for 12 minutes. He had, he had five match points, several break points against him, long, long rallies. At one point, I thought he was just going to pass out. He had a long rally. He was walking back to the, towards the commentary box. And he, I thought he was, he, he made yeah. call 911. Yeah. But he <laughs> held it together and toughest game ever, and he came through. And, 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 you know, you see other sports stars who reach the top, and then they seem to, you know, crash and burn. They drink too much, they start taking drugs, they get fat, they lose, <laughs> they lose their way in life. It seems that with some people, success becomes a burden to them. I mean, I, I know you lecture around the world and talk about how you stay at the top, and I suspect it's the same whether you're in business or whether you're in sport. Absolutely. It's, it, there must be some kind of mental discipline that marks you out from other people. Well, all the lessons that we apply in tennis or in sport apply to regular life as well as business life. But for somebody like, like myself or Andy who 
worked so hard to get to this point. You have to have that mental toughness to do all the work that it takes to get to the top. As the saying goes, many have the will to win, very few have the will to prepare. And he prepared. So when he gets on the court, of course he has the will to win because all the hard work has already been done. Playing the match is, in a way, a payoff. It's, that's where you want to be. That's, where, that's what you want to be doing. So even though that last game took forever and it took so much out of him, still, that's, where he, that's what he was working all those years for. So now that he has done it, he can relax. He doesn't have to prove anything to anybody anymore. Of course, he can win it again many times if he stays healthy. And now everything is kind of icing on the cake. Winning the, now he wants to win the US Open, maybe get the number one ranking. After that, the career Grand Slam, winning the Australian Open, and of course, the French Open, which probably would be the hardest one for him to win on clay. And then after that, maybe going for, you know, being in the conversation of the greatest tennis players of all time. So the motivation, sure. I think, will stay there for a long time. Andy's in the prime of his life now. And now, I mean, the world is his oyster, so it's, it doesn't Martina, get any better let, than let that. Let me finally ask you this question. I, 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 I love playing tennis, and I'm certainly not going to dare to challenge you to play any game of tennis against you. But let <laughs> me say, I, I go out and play tennis and enjoy the experience of playing tennis. When you're Martina Navratilova in a Wimbledon final or Andy Murray, in a Wimbledon final, do you enjoy it or is it just an intense, I can't believe there is pleasure there, maybe afterwards, but not while it's going on. It's, it's enjoyable and terrifying at the same time uh, because all those years of hard work either are going to pay off or you're going to have the biggest disappointment you ever had. But you know, nothing mentioned, nothing yet. You have to lay it on the line, you have to give it all you have, then hopefully you will win. That's why sometimes people don't try so hard because they, if you try really hard and you still fail, then it's extremely disappointing. But then the payoff is that much greater. So yes, uh, you are enjoying it, but you are absolutely terrified. And everybody okay. gets nervous out there. It's who handles it the best that gets, gets the cake at the end of the day. And, and Andy's got the trophy because he handled it so well yesterday. OK, Martina, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you very much indeed right. for being with us. Thank you for all the tennis pleasure you. you've given us as well and for sharing uh, your reflections with us on Global. Very good to uh, speak to you. Thank you.